Okay, let's talk about properties of ionic solutions. So uh, I'm going to go over some key ideas with regards to this. So to begin with, ionic solutions, we have to think about what an ion is. And remember that an ion is different from like other kinds of atoms and that an ion carries a charge. So remember, in, like for example, if you want to talk oxygen, just oxygen, there's no electronic, there's no charge on it. However, an oxide ion would be an O2 minus charge. So regular atom is neutral and ion is charged. So this is about what happens when you take an ionic, an ionic compound. Remember, ionic compound is generally metal plus non-metal combines to make an ionic compound or anything containing a polyatomic ion. What happens when you put them in water? So consider this. When you put an ionic compound in water, it dissociates. So if you can ask someone a question, you can say, hey, if you mix salt and water, what do you get? It's not technically salt water. If you put salt plus water, you don't have salt anymore. You've just got ions floating around. So that's right, sodium chloride, salt. If you put sodium chloride in water, it's no longer sodium chloride, it's sodium ions floating around and chloride ions floating around because it goes through this dissociation being pulled apart into opposite ions. So, this is like the equation that gives the idea. Now, um, okay, yes, ionic compounds separated into cations and anions, but potassium chloride, just like sodium chloride, same thing. Potassium chloride solution doesn't contain potassium chloride, it contains potassium ions and chloride ions. Same for all the rest of these ionic compounds. Again, this is true only for ionic compounds. Non-ionic compounds, such as sugar or carbon dioxide or whatever, will not, may dissolve, but they will not dissociate. Because dissociating split into ions, if it's not ionic, it cannot split into ions, even though it might dissolve. By the way, if it can't dissolve, then it can't turn into ions either. So um, things that are not water soluble will not go through this process. So anyway, you know, make note of this on your handout, but we use this term electrolyte because they conduct electricity. I mean, after all, think about that. That, doesn't, that makes sense, right? If you put something that has a charge in water, it allows the water to conduct electricity. Pure water actually doesn't conduct electricity. However, your water at home will because tap water is full of all kinds of ionic compounds. Not enough to taste really, to like to make it taste salty, but enough that it'll, it'll conduct electricity, but pure water won't. Okay, because charged particles obviously can carry an electrical charge. So in terms of how you actually show this on paper, we have to consider the fact that these are the equations you've been working with since the beginning of chemistry. We show you an equation where something reacts with something to make something, and remember that this word, aqueous, means dissolved in water. Technically, this is a lie. We put it here to kind of just show you like what we started with and what we end up with, especially if you were to remove all the water and have like just these things left, but it's technically a lie. Remember, I said salt water doesn't contain any salt. It contains sodium ions and chloride ions, or whatever kind of salt you put in there you know, with the appropriate ions for that salt. Same thing here. So what's really going on is if it is aqueous, that means it's dissolved in water. And if it is an ionic compound, it is dissolved and it splits into ions. So notice two potassiums, two potassiums. Two, one chromate ion, this is one single chromate, makes one single chromate ion. Notice we put the charge on there. Notice each one is labeled as aqueous because it's dissolved in water. One barium, two nitrates, Okay, that's the reason for this, and nitrates of minus one. Um, but notice, wait, what happened here? These got split into ions. See, this one split into these. Why didn't this one get split? Well, it's like I said earlier. This means solid, it means it does not dissolve in water. So the deal here is, if it cannot dissolve in water, then it cannot split into ions, even if it is an anion compound. If it cannot dissolve in water, it cannot split into ions. So if it says anything other than aqueous, if it said gas, or liquid, or solid, it means do not split it into ions when you write the full ionic equation. Because you'll notice the other thing, two potassium nitrates, so two potassiums, two potassiums, two nitrates, two nitrates. So you notice like it balances out. Two potassiums, two nitrates. I mean, all the principles of a balanced equation apply. We're just recognizing reality that 
yes, this might be the form of what you put in, but as soon as it hits the water, this turns into this. And this is what's actually in the beaker. Now, a full ionic equation shows everything that's there, but you know, we don't really necessarily want to pay attention to everything going on because the real reaction that's happening, what's the only thing that changes? Well, we started with all aqueous stuff and ended with something that's not aqueous. We formed a precipitate. That's the thing of interest. When you put clear color solution and clear color solution together and get something colored and obviously not clear anymore, that's the reaction to pay attention to. In this case, we call it a double displacement reaction that successfully happens. So we oftentimes will look at the net ionic equation where we just focus on the reaction that we care about. So notice this, the net ionic reaction is much shorter, or this net ionic equation is much shorter than the full ionic equation. Reason why, we said, okay, look, certain things like this potassium are present both in the products and the reactant side. So why pay attention to it? Ignore it. The nitrate is on both the product side and the reactant side, so why pay attention to it? Let's ignore it. Just say, we're going to say, look, here's the solid precipitate that's made, and these things came together to make this. So because they don't appear on both sides of the equation, you leave them behind for your net ionic equation. If that's true for this, that's true for these, because they don't appear in the same form on both sides. So um, anyway, that's how you handle the net ionic equation, and again, this applies to anything solid, liquid, or gas, if it isn't aqueous, it's going to be involved in the net ionic equation somehow or another, assuming it isn't the identical on both sides of the, of the equation. And by the way, these ones that I crossed out right here, they've got a name too. So if these things are the main show, so to speak, the main part of the reaction that we're watching, then all the other stuff that's just sitting and watching is a spectator. I mean, after all, think about it. A spectator just sits and watches an event, doesn't necessarily participate, right? So the potassium and the nitrate are present on both sides. They're the ones I crossed out to show that they're not really participating in the reaction. So they're spectator ions. So that applies to all of these. So if I want you to write the full and net equations for something, let's see, you got to break these apart in ions so that one lead, two potassium, or two nitrates. By the way, lead's a transition metal. You have to ferret with the charges. So you look at nitrate, find it's minus one. There's two nitrates. So total minus two, therefore the lead's a plus two. That's why this happened. Um, the nitrate's minus one. You can look up on a chart or memorize it. Sodium, sulfate. Okay, remember, you break up everything that is aqueous. Do not break up non-aqueous things. And then, of course, you the lead sulfate is the non-aqueous thing, and uh, the lead and the sulfate are what came together to make the non-aqueous thing. So there's your net ionic equation. Okay, make sure you specify states of matter, specify charges for ions, and if there's more than one, you know, like here, if, if nitrate was part of it, you'd have to include that number two right there, if nitrate was part of it. So there's more, you know, examples like this. This works, this works out nicely too. Um, net ionic equation, split this into ions, split this into ions, split this into ions. Do not split this, it is not aqueous. Okay, that's the reason for this. And as for the net ionic equation, if this is your non-aqueous thing, you write down the things that come together to make the non-aqueous thing. Balance it with charges according to how they should be in the equation. Okay, so in terms of how that goes, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. I think the rest of these are homework problems, so you can look at these, use these as examples. Mm, yeah, that should work.